there are two kinds of COVID winners. There's the predictable ones that you can see coming. And then there are the counterintuitive ones that took us all by surprise. After not so hot day, where the Dow dipped 205 points, S&P declined 0.65%, NASDAQ lost 1.27%. I think it's important to go over the companies that have shocked us here with their outperformance, because I think they can continue to shock. The obvious winners were, were uh, obvious. We know people are hanging out at Facebook while they peruse Apple's app store, uh, order things from Amazon, search on Google. These companies, by the way, are all going to go to Capitol Hill tomorrow, where they'll face a hostile audience because they're simply doing too well. I didn't take a chance to figure out that the shutdown would force people to use the Internet. If I weren't Jimmy Chill in real life, I'd be jealous of the Titans, even though their CEOs are about to be drawn and quartered by the House Judiciary Subcommittee on Antitrust. I'm torn on this because while these big tech companies, uh, their platforms arguably have way too much market power. (laughs) No kidding, right? They got there by being really good at what they do. And that's capitalism. And they've all done a much better job of responding to the pandemic than uh, the government. But forget the obvious COVID winners. That's not what I want to talk about. I want to talk about the big surprises, the things that people are doing when you can't go to the movies or a ball game or ship your kids off to summer camp or to fly to Europe or take a cruise. These are shockers because it's never happened before. A recession that never had these stocks go higher. So I've got the top 10 for you. 10 stocks that are in fuego because they, are, they were able to come out of nowhere and capitalize on the worst pandemic in 100 years. And that's a, I'm not talking about Lululemon or Tesla, which were both hotter than hot even before the outbreak. I'm talking about real stunners. Stunner number one is Polaris, PII. Here's a company that makes all sorts of off-road vehicles, snowmobiles, and just this morning it reported a monster quarter. Yeah, it was one of the hottest summers on record, so it wasn't big uh, snowmobile, but wow, ATVs? I mean, yeah, by the way, this is not even the craziest part of the pandemic paradox. Normally, when we go into recession, Polaris gets crushed because ATVs and snowmobiles are the ultimate discretionary spending. Scott Wine, the CEO, thought this was going to happen again. This time, though, Polaris delivered much better than expected numbers. And even Scott admitted to me that he hadn't seen it coming. Turns out that riding an ATV is the ultimate pandemic pastime. Think about it. You're outdoors. You wear gloves. Hey, and you got helmets. And helmets, well, they're much better than even my incredibly cool Honeywell mask. And by the way, of course, you're in the middle of nowhere. I mean, this is, this is pandemic heaven. It sure beats sitting in the Miami Marlins dugout. If you believe, as I do, that we're still many months away from a vaccine, you stick with P-I-I. Number two. We just got a great quarter from Sherwin-Williams. Apparently, people like to paint their homes when they've got nothing else to do. I'd rather hammer nails into my hands, but I'm not exactly Mr. Home Improvement. Again, in a normal session, you don't bother fixing up your house. Why? Because it's an expense in a normal session. Houses lose value. Not this one, though. Home values keep rising as people flee the cities for suburbs and the exurbs. D.R. Horton, the big home builder, put an amazing set of numbers last night. When you can sell your home, buying Sherwin-Williams paint is a great investment. Same goes for Sherwin-Williams, the stock. Third is Mattel. Now, we had CEO Enon Cries on last night, and he talked about skyrocketing Barbie sales. Big, big numbers. But what I found most interesting wasn't Barbie, although the numbers were incredible. It's that Uno, Uno, is now the number one biggest board game in the country. Uno. And there's like 70 different kinds of Uno. Hey, we've got this one shipped, by the way. Uh, which is really cool. We got a whole bunch of things on ship that came in like within an hour. And, um, you know, look, Uno, I mean, I, I, th- I know people, this is like, a, what, people have been playing Uno all their lives. And here it is. It just suddenly got back, you know, and I know why. Because you only need two people to play Uno. So what does that make? It makes the ideal quarantine pastime. This is it. This is what you do when you're being quarantined. Don't miss a second of Mad Money. Follow at Jim Kramer on Twitter. Have a question? Tweet Kramer. Hashtag Mad Tweets. Send Jim an email to madmoney at cnbc.com or give us a call at 1-800-743-CNBC. Miss something? Head to madmoney.cnbc.com.